Alip Bata killing me softly. Coming up in 30 seconds, and it's a first time reaction. Hey, everybody, how you doing? This is Matt Criscola coming to you up close and personal with another reaction. Alip Bata. Uh, I think at this point, you know that I am a hardcore, diehard Aliper. You know, Kopi Manakopi is really all. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I get choked up with Alip Bata. He's that amazing. So anyway, <clears throat> thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. If you have, if you haven't, please consider doing so. We can stay in touch that way and ring the bell icon. And um, <clears throat> if you look in the description below, there are a few ways that you can support the channel and that will be greatly appreciated as YouTube does not monetize most of my videos. And I would really like to continue to keep doing this. If you want to keep seeing this face doing these reactions, um, you know, please consider giving if you can. If not, that's okay. Stick around. Check it out because this guy, Ali Bata, is amazing. Uh, killing me softly. And I'm sure he's going to kill this uh, and softly. So let's get right to it, shall we? Ali Bata. You know, Alip is a boss. He is the boss. You know what I like about Alip? <clears throat> he is so accomplished and so masterful at what he does that his touch, you know, he ghosts and implies certain notes and phrases. Sometimes he doesn't actually pluck them out and you don't actually hear them super, super clear. But because of his intention and because of his mastery, you know, you, you, you get the feel, you get the idea, you get the point. When he plays those fast lines and those, those fast phrases, you know, he's kind of like dancing over them, just like, you know, but he executes and he's very, he's always on time. He's never late. And, and it, it's just so intentional that even if he doesn't actually play all of the notes, they are strongly implied and understood. So, and, and you might be saying, Jesus, sounds like he's playing all the notes to me. He is, but it, it, it's really just, it goes a little bit beyond that. It goes a little bit beyond just the notes. It's about the feel. It's about the experience. It's about the, the, the mastery of the instrument and the musicality. You know, it's just this nuanced thing that, you know, he doesn't have to play he, everything. He could actually leave some of the stuff out and it would still, it would still be understood. It's probably a little bit abstract what I'm talking about, but um, maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry if I'm not being articulate about it.
Okay, so we, most of us, I would assume at this point, know the song. Great song. By the way, I also did a reaction to Jesse J doing this. Oh my God, I love Jesse J. But what I was going to say was, you know, we all know the song. Alip knows the song, right? So he starts playing it. He starts getting into the fabric of the song. This is before he actually does this recording, right? What I would believe that he does, what I would do, is take the song. You say, okay, I know the song. Killing me softly. Right? And then you start playing it. You start getting into it. You start feeling your way through it. You know, you start... You start getting comfortable with it. Then you start hearing uh, some a different... Uh, then your fingers fall a certain way. Something happens and you go, oh, I like that. I'm going to incorporate that into my arrangement. And you know what? That almost feels like now it's feeling like a certain type of a rhythm. And then maybe something else happens where it starts to feel almost a little bit uh, Latin or something like that. And it, it, it's a combination of your technique, which brings you to those ideas, what's already in your head that brings you to those ideas, and the song itself, the framework, the blueprint of the song, the melody, the shape, the the you know the the different shapes of the melody that sometimes you know it, everything you know all of a sudden it just things start to click and you say you know what and that's when you incorporate your own personal interpretation of it and that's when you have different arrangements of a song where you say geez this is I know the song but it doesn't sound like the original that's because for the because the artist who then took a custodianship of it you know decided to rearrange it and make it his own or hit her own, and that's what Alip did here, and I really love it. You know, you hear Alip, you know, and you hear what he brings to the to the song, and in some cases, you even like the way they, you know, somebody like Alip does a song like this versus even the original, you know. <laughs> Flamenco, killing me softly, flamenco. <laughs> A little blues, a little flamenco, a little tango, a little uh, a, a little uh, whatever else he threw a little bit in there. And you know what I was talking about before when I said that he doesn't have to necessarily, you know, play every note. You know, play every note. You see the way I just said no. You know, I'm trying to say note. I didn't have to actually say the whole word. You know, he's not playing every note. You know, it's like you. It's implied. You understand what I'm saying because I'm speaking very clearly and fluidly. We hope. But that's what he does. He plays so fluidly and so clearly that even if he doesn't actually play the notes so, so clearly that, um, you know, and enunciate every little thing, you still get the point of what he's trying to do. Uh, it comes across. And then the other thing is, and th this arrangement, Killing Me Softly, uh, depending on the instrument that you're playing, in this case, he's playing a guitar, right? So the guitar has a rich history in playing so many different types of music. And he personally has played so many different styles of music. So when he's going to interpret a song like Killing Me Softly, he's going to inject, you know, certain things that will pop up in his, in his mind uh, uh, while he's playing it, if it feels a certain way on the guitar. Now, if I was playing this on the saxophone, especially coming from a jazz background, I might actually 
I would probably interpret this differently. Hopefully it would be interesting, we would hope, but you get my point. And if a, and a, and if a trumpet player was going to play this or if a piano player was going to play this, all those instruments have a different, you know, they have different uh, ways of getting around on them, different, you know, different approaches, different, uh, you know, and different histories to them, you know. Uh, can you imagine if Dimash or Diana, well, Dimash can play some, I don't know about Diana Ankudinova, but I know that Dimash plays a, a little bit of guitar or the dombra, or whatever that is. Imagine what he would sound like playing this, you know, bringing his own personal experiences and, and his heritage and his history, you know. So that's what I like about music. You know, there's so many, it's so much, it's so personal. But yet it still speaks to all of us universally. So it's really a beautiful thing. Ali Bata, what can I say about him? He is the man. He's killing us softly uh, with all of his beautiful songs. And he's doing a great job doing it. And listen, hey, thank you so much, Ali. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate that. And thank you for your support in any way that you can. That would be great. And just showing up is nice. So guys, listen, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And you take it easy. And if it's real easy, take it twice. Oh,